a little bit of kindling wood on to warm it up. One of my really favorite sayings in the history of science is from Kepler. When Kepler realized there couldn't be any crystal spheres carrying the planets around uh, in the sky, he said, henceforth the planets must find their way through the void like the birds through the air. We must philosophize about these things differently. That's what I think about cosmology. We must philosophize about it differently. We need different underlying concepts. I'm Julian Barber. I'm an independent theoretical physicist. I've now reached the tender age of 86. I've been studying time since 1963. Quite a long time I've been thinking about time. I, I enjoy nature, and particularly flowers. Uh, in fact, I got into astronomy because of flowers. I, I wanted to look up marshmallows. <laughs> accidentally stumbled on the article for Mars, which completely blew, blew my mind. And from the age of 10, it was my firm uh, desire to become uh, an astronomer or astrophysicist. I've, I've never stopped thinking about these things. It, it, it doesn't really need much of a stimulus. You're concentrating for a long time on some particular problem, then you do something else and suddenly an idea comes to you. The standard way that people think about the universe is based on, on general relativity and one of the problems of general relativity is that it was very difficult to understand how structure forms at the Big Bang. So they speculated this idea that at the early stage in the universe suddenly there was a huge expansion that made it almost flat. That's the origin of the theory of inflation. Inflation seems to work wonderfully once it's got going, but how does it get going? I think people are increasingly worried about that paradigm now. A lot of very eminent cosmologists are in despair about the, the situation. People are increasingly worried about it. Perhaps there wasn't any inflation at all. And the problem is that general relativity is not quite right. We're going to the astrophysics department in Oxford uh, to meet Pedro Ferreira. He's now a professor at, uh, at astrophysics in, in Oxford. I certainly come from a different point of view. Back in 2014, we, we went to see him in Oxford. And that was when he suggested we look for hints of a Newtonian alternative to inflation. When Pedro made this challenge, it, it, it never occurred to me that I would be seriously saying there might be an alternative to it. And actually, it's no exaggeration to say that's what I've been doing for the last nine and a half years. We can use Newtonian theory, Newtonian gravity, to suggest a different story of the universe. And it's very, very interesting. And it l suggests a pretty well unique theory of the universe that starts maximally uniform and goes on getting more and more structured. 
And in particular, it suggests that there may be no need for inflation. There's a concept that I learned, the well-ordered cosmos. It was a positive view of the universe. Overall, the universe is a wonderful, positive thing. But that really was destroyed by the discovery of thermodynamics. Within five years, the notion of the heat death of the universe had come into existence. This was going to be the future of the universe. It was going to be dull, uninteresting, and, and no life. Now, in Newtonian theory, what is rather beautiful is that you, you can have a Newtonian initial condition which is like a swarm of bees. All the particles are moving in random directions with different velocities. But as the system evolves, it clusters, the particles cluster. And in particular, what happens very often is that two particles get bound together and they form what I call a Kepler pair. Starting in these chaotic conditions, several Kepler pairs are forming and all of them, they, they keep step with each other. It's almost as if they were a ballet dance. Well, it is a ballet dance. It's a choreography. It's as if they're all looking at each other and all making sure that they're in step with each other. And they are because Newton's laws ensures that that happens. So now the, the probability of what we should experience is literally inverted instead of the most probable universe should be dull and uninteresting is inverted. It's highly probable that we should find ourselves in an interesting universe. And at this stage, I say, just look around. What do you see? It's a bloody interesting universe is all I can say. So I think at least in this sense, our theory agrees with observation. So this is a wonderful creation of order. And it is exactly what Einstein said he should have done. And lo and behold, it's sitting there in Newtonian theory. Maybe the Newtonian theory gives us some hint of an alternative to general relativity right at the start of the universe. In fact, this alternative explanation all comes from Pedro Ferreira's challenge. Hi. Hello, Julian. How are Hello. you? How are you? I'm How are very you? well, Pedro. <laughs> All the better for seeing you. <laughs> take Great. a seat, take a seat. My conjecture could, could be that, that a Newtonian Big Bang begins maximally uniform, but not absolutely uniform. Mm -hmm. It begins with seeds out of which structure will grow of absolute necessity. If we find that the Newtonian theory gives the correct fluctuations. That would be very exciting. I find this idea of just focusing on the end body problem really well motivated. Yes. You got me very intrigued. Um, you look at these pictures that you've produced and they are cosmic web-ish, mm. right? You do see voids and filaments. But the problem is that cosmology is now at a stage where ish is not enough. And now the question is whether the precise numbers match. Cosmology is really at an age where the data is incredibly precise. For this to be a competitor with the current paradigm of the formation of large scale structure, you would have to meet those standards. Yeah. And it might, but we, you're not there yet. What, what I think I can claim is that what we're advocating is actually completely new ideas. And at least qualitatively, it looks remarkable. The whole history then from then on looks remarkably like our universe at the qualitative level. I think that is a, a grounds for saying, well, we should look at this and take it a bit more seriously. I think my main concern with all of these theories is we have very limited information about the early universe. I, the way that I think about it is we can measure three numbers about the beginning of the universe. That's all we have. And it's very difficult to distinguish between theories based on three numbers. So I'm slowly 
but very, you know, inexorably moving to a situation where I think it'll be very difficult to come up, well, to prove or disprove what is the theory of the origin of the universe. I think people will form an opinion, will choose the theory mm. which they believe in most. Shakespeare's sonnets, wonderful. Well, I could read it. <laughs> In me thou seest the glowing of such fire that on the ashes of his youth doth lie as the deathbed whereon it must expire, consumed with that which it was nourished by. It's really an anticipation of the second law of thermodynamics. <laughs> the, <laughs> starts off with logs of wood that are all nicely structured and it looks nice and bright for a start and then finally it's all consumed and there's just ashes left. Using the bellows. It would be wonderful if people would take up these ideas because I've been working on it for a long time. I think there's a sporting chance they will change physics and cosmology. That would be very nice if that happened. And then I wouldn't have spent 60 years thinking about these things in vain. I've been incredibly lucky. It's been a very rich and rewarding life working on these ideas. I've greatly enjoyed it. My hope is that people will start thinking about these fundamental questions. Once you address them, they, they're very simple once you take them seriously. And it's amazing where they take you when you do follow them up.